Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to episode 118 of Dev Chatter. It is Monday and it's October. So that's that's crazy. Uh, I don't know where all the time has gone, but welcome everybody. Hopefully you're having a great start to your week. Uh, as I'm sure you probably guessed, we're going to do a little bit of coding today. Um, Earlier, I uh, added some code into our chatbot that uh, I want to get started working on. Um, uh, anyone that's also been paying attention on social media, maybe you follow me on uh, Twitter, or maybe you've been chatting with us in our Discord, uh, you might also notice that I have been prepping for a conference. I'm actually going to be at uh, Tech Bash later this week. Uh, which is going to mean I'm going to have to miss a couple of our streams this week, so hopefully we'll get enough awesome stuff in today, and on Saturday I should be back. Uh, either way, if anyone's going to be at um, Tech Bash, I will have my item coding stickers with me uh, when we... Uh... So in case you run into me at the event, uh, I will have stickers if anyone wants them. Uh, hello, McCullen. Hello, uh, Katrina Stoolpenner, One Kev Griff, uh, saw a bunch of other people say hi. Uh, Simon Engineering, uh, so Simon, DevCK, welcome everyone. Uh, Rick Hicks, do I code standing up? The answer to that question is yes, I actually used to code while walking, which you'd be surprised, typing is actually the easy part. Uh, I used to use a walking desk, and uh, it's funny, people are like, how do you type? I'm like, actually, typing's not that bad, because you just, you anchor with the, you know, the pads of the, of your, of your hands, and then you can type pretty easily. Uh, it's it's using a mouse that's really difficult because there's nothing anchoring your arm. So as you walk, you can't click on anything. It's really crazy. Uh, try a walking desk sometime and you'll see what I mean. Uh, uh, 4P3S, hello. Welcome, everyone. Okay, so um, hopefully everybody had a fantastic weekend and is ready for a good week, uh, whatever you're doing. I always use a standing desk while sitting. Uh, stool penner. The funny thing is, people laugh about that. I have seriously uh, worked at standing desks all the time while sitting. You just like lift your arms up, and you're like, "Yep, don't feel like adjusting anything." I just wanted to sit for five minutes. You get weird looks. It's fine though. Okay, so here is what I was working on: uh, overlay and voting. Anything else I need to mention before we uh, dive into the code too much further? Let me see. Other stuff. Oh, if I didn't mention it, all the code we do here on stream, if you are new here, all the code we do is out on GitHub. You can find it at github.com slash devchatter, and there are repositories for all the stuff we do. Uh, devchatter uh, repo, I pretty much keep clean, and um, by clean I mean it's only the things that we work on here on the stream, so it's uh, fairly easy to find what you're looking for there. Uh, Rick Hicks, just a question. Humans are not really good at multitasking, so isn't standing or walking while coding actually a detriment mentally? Uh, actually, you'd be surprised. So it doesn't take much thought to stand. <laughs> so, uh, we don't think really while we are walking either. So neither of those tasks is a mindful task. Uh, the more distracting is, um, is that I talk to you guys. <laughs> I will give you that one. Um, but the, uh, no, um... Walking while you're coding does not actually require a lot of thought. You just kind of do it, and actually, after a while, you just kind of you just kind of go and you're like, you're like, oh wow, yeah, I'm walking. I forgot I was walking, and and it's weird. So, uh, Randactyl, um, get one. Uh, if you need to, you don't even actually have to get like a standing desk. Standing desk, you could just lift it up on cinder blocks or something like that. It's not that bad. Uh, just be careful that whatever you, if you do it that way, make sure it's stable and you don't have your desk fall on you or anything. Uh, you could use a powerful editor that doesn't involve a mouse. Yes, root guy, exactly. That's what, that's how I got around things. But if you need to, like, do anything that involves clicking anyway, then it still becomes a challenge. Uh, the difficult task is walking and chewing gum. <laughs> hey, s &B. Nice. That's the way you want to start things off. Uh, three months! Hey, wait! That means SNB's uh, hatching out of his egg, isn't he? Congratulations! Uh, and uh, thank you, SNB. Let's see some uh, Chatosauruses uh, in, in the chat there, everybody. Anybody got hype emotes? Spam those in chat. 
Uh, Death Pax, hey, welcome. Uh, my standing desk can go all the way to the floor, so sometimes I just sit on the floor. Uh, that is actually amazing. I love the idea of a standing desk that could go all the way to a floor. Uh, that would be really cool. Uh, so, uh, Rick, actually the reason why I like standing while I code is actually because I feel that it keeps me a little more mindful. I don't, like, get that, like, I'm slumped into my chair, you know, like, glazed thing. Um, I tend to get kind of, like, antsy if I sit down for too long, so that's actually why I have to stand uh, for a reasonable amount of my day. I get kind of... Like, when I travel and get stuck sitting for long periods of time, I'm usually, like, <laughs> not in good shape. Uh, I do much better when I stand up for a good while, so. But that's just me. There's a lot of variants. Anyway, uh, so I wanted to talk about upcoming things before I coded, so I, I wanted to make sure I didn't forget to mention this stuff. So, as I said, uh, I will not be around for the Tuesday and Thursday streams this week, so I preemptively canceled them. If I had a way to... Uh, make the Thursday one work. I would try to do a stream while I'm at Tech Bash. We'll see if I can. Um, so no promises on that. I canceled it just in case, but if I can make a stream happen on Thursday or Friday, I will tweet and message everybody on Discord and let all you all of you people know uh, as quickly as I can so you can catch it. Uh, I should be back in time for the Saturday stream, so don't worry. We're just missing two. It's not like that time <laughs> back in the spring where I uh, had to miss like two weeks of streams and uh, thought people were going to kill me over that one. Uh, either way, we moved Jonathan Knapp's guest appearance to the to next week, so he'll be here in about eight days. And then uh, one other mention, uh, we've got Guy Royce on the schedule for the week after, so should be some awesome streams. Um, John is, uh, is an awesome developer that does a lot of stuff in languages that are not C-sharp, so I want to talk to him about that kind of stuff. Might do some JavaScript with him. Uh, Guy is also not a C-sharp developer, uh, and we're going to do some machine learning stuff uh, with Guy. So we've got those couple of things coming up, and uh, with that, let's take a look at our code. So back when we were working on... Uh, our voting system. For those of you who haven't seen it, um, essentially what happens is when I, when we do votes in the channel here, so in the chat if I need to get you guys' opinions on things, run a poll so I can find out, you know, who likes, uh, you know, who thinks we should do this or that or whatever, uh, the way that we do that is I type a message into the chat using the vote command, which if I do it wrong, whoops, vote, um, you'll see that nothing happens, because that's not how we do it. Um, if I say, and this is going to look, I apologize about this one, guys, this is going to be messed up. Um, other languages than C Sharp and JavaScript. Fuel Snable, yes. Um, so, um, John, I would not even really describe as a JavaScript developer or a C Sharp developer. Uh, he's one of the, like... Uh, as far as I know, he does a reasonable amount of uh, Ruby and PHP and, and other things, but not just, uh, not just C-sharp and JavaScript. Um, I don't even think... He, he might know, know C-sharp, but I don't know if he knows C-sharp. Uh, Guy, I know, is not a C-sharp dev. Uh, he's done... I, I know I've seen him do Java stuff before, and I've seen him do uh, plenty of JavaScript before, uh, but for some reason I'm remembering that he did Python as well, but... It's hard to remember what languages any given developer focuses on. Either way, uh, just as an example, red, blue, and this is going to get crazy, I apologize. I'm going to have to turn off the overlay as soon as I do this. There we go. So the voting has started. Feel free to start voting. Uh, oh, dang it. I still have that on. Okay. That was not right. Um... Vote receive, do that. Don't, don't do that. Hang on. Vote start, do that. There we go. Okay, clearing that out. Sorry about that, everybody. Vote new. Uh, whoops, I have to reload this now. Hang on. Clicky, clicky, clicky. Uh, I need to go to the overlays. I need a button to auto-refresh this page. So, uh, for anyone who doesn't know what's going on here, and I am confusing the crap out of you, let me explain. 
this screen here that you guys see has me down here, has Visual Studio behind me, and in front of both me and Visual Studio is actually a full screen uh, browser window. So we have a web page loaded there. I can, through the, the, that chat window there that you can all type in, I can send messages to the JavaScript in that web page. And we can then do whatever we want with them. So, we are using SignalR to do that. So there's a SignalR uh, server running in our ASP.NET Core website, and that sends messages to our uh, SignalR client in JavaScript. So if I do vote create uh, red, yellow, blue, green again, in theory it actually did it, but I cannot tell. May not have. Okay. So let me show you guys what, so before was our old one. Um, what I had done since the last stream was I went and I grabbed a new charting uh, tool. So let me throw that on the screen so you guys can see what we're messing with here. So that is, uh, actually let me move this over into a different browser. Move it into this one. Okay, so we're gonna load up the overlay here and this is the web page right here, this overlay URL. This is the one. And I've got it kind of messed up right now, actually, because I've been changing things specifically for doing this overlay. So let me pull everything down. And I'm going to turn off the overlay in our actual stream. So, uh, so you'll not see a double right now. You'll only see this one. Okay. Uh, so why vote start function rather than function vote start? Uh, if fuel snable yet is pretty much the same thing. It's just whatever I happen to write at the time. Um, I'm not consistent enough with that. Uh, I need to be though. Uh, so feel free to yell at me if I do one of those. Anyway, let's go ahead and do this. So we're gonna go ahead and trigger one of those, and let me get rid of that breakpoint because we don't want to catch a breakpoint see what happens do we have anything on the screen no okay so here's what we're gonna do uh other stuff in chat also uh source five i didn't say hi hello greetings welcome copious uh welcome 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 and uh thank you for the compliment i much appreciate it okay so let's go ahead and do this i'm gonna put this canvas back the way that it was so I'm undoing this change real fast here. Canvas. Canvas. Wait, what? Oh, whoops. Derp. Let me go ahead and reset that. Back to the way it was. So we're going to make this page work again. So I started doing that, and uh, please ignore the fact that I literally had to import into thing. Uh, we're trying to override a library that we are using. All right, so we have refreshed the overlay. There we go. Okay, so that's what happens on the screen uh, when I have the overlay turned on. Uh, so just as an example, if I turn on the overlay, hide this window, uh, just so you all can see it, you'll see that it does that over top of the screen. So that's what I mean when I say that there is an overlay on this page. Um, Conrad, it may. Uh, that's actually a great question, doesn't it? Looks like no. Since I can't make it happen, but yes, it, it should have that. I would be way nice if I could undo an individual line. Uh, we should yell at them to make them do that, because I bet they will if we ask. Anyway, I'm turning the overlay back off, uh, because it is much easier for us to debug and work with one that is here and is an actual browser and someone triggered hype. Or was that me from before, that it didn't load, didn't run until I pulled the page up? I don't know. Probably the latter. Okay, so uh, there is our overlay. 
yeah, so Conrad, all, they all have uh, various different features. Uh, Source Tree has a lot of stuff. Uh, Source Tree has, like, a, a function to do everything. Uh, copious. Actually, this is GitHub Desktop, uh, which is slightly different. <clears throat> GitHub for Windows is their, is actually their previous one. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and see what happens right now if I create a new vote. So vote create A, B, C. Oh, there's already an active vote. Sorry. Derp. Vote. Vote. There we go. Alpha. Beta. Hmm. Didn't do anything. What if it's these that messed it up? So we'll do that, refresh it, and we'll try this vote one, vote end, vote new, uh, red, yellow, blue. There we go, got it. Okay, cool. Uh, there actually is a pull request for the feature, but it seems dead. Oh, really? That's that's disappointing, uh, Conrad Reuter. Okay, so this is the chart. What I don't know then, so I wanted to grab an actual charting tool uh, that we could then just grab and we could do various things with charts on the stream. So I thought that would be a valuable thing to be able to have as a starting point. So two things I want to do with voting. Number one, I want to actually use a charting tool for handling this thing. Number two, uh, someone brought up a long time ago a notification tool uh, that we could have little pop-up messages come up and just say, hey, this thing happened, this thing happened, this thing happened. Uh, so we could let people know about things like someone voted for this. Uh, so that could pop up on the screen even if we didn't have that. Or we could say, hey, there's a new follow and other things like that. So I want to grab an existing notification library rather than make our own on that piece. Uh, because a lot of good tools exist out there for that stuff. Uh, let me see. Lazarus, uh, I wonder if professional programmers do really care about their arm and body position when being in front of their monitors. Uh, a lot of them actually do. Uh, care quite a bit about uh, making sure that they're at a fairly comfortable se uh, setup so that they don't hurt themselves over time. And uh, welcome, Ferris. Uh, Lazarus, Entity01, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Glad you're all here on this Monday. Uh, so we don't have votes showing up just yet. Uh, Entity, we are working on some of our overlay stuff. <laughs> and a new sub coming in with a uh, Twitch Prime sub. Uh, Shkizi, I am guessing is how that's pronounced, but welcome. Uh, let's get some hype in the chat there. Anybody's got those chatosauruses? Let's see some of those spammed in chat. Derp. <laughs> and uh, welcome to the uh, the chatosaurus crew. Uh, Katrina, position is key. My setup has to be perfect. Uh, yeah, exactly, Katrina. I, I do think there are a lot of devs that care about how they're seated and how they're set up. Okay, so we removed that and that works. Uh, let's take a look. So this is chart JS. Um, update data. So how are we supposed to add data? No. No. Wait, update? Wait, hang on, update. What does update do? Scales? No. Alright, so here's what we're going to do, var, chart, I guess I could let a chart, right? Um, chart equals that, and then when we get a vote, instead of updating there, I want to say chart update. Uh, 
updates all data sets. Updates all data sets? That actually sounds really good. Will that do it without making any like actual changes, guys? Hmm. I like it. That work that'd work well if that's a if that's a thing. Um Greetings, ThinkBot Labs. Welcome. <laughs> Yes, there is actually a vote on, despite not seeing the the voting piece right now. We are gonna we are gonna get that. Uh, so right now, the way it sets up is we're setting up a horizontal bar chart, and the label is number of votes. Uh, we may make that so that when you create a vote, you can specify the name if you want. Um, so. I don't think it's just the display. I think we need to make this update, but we'll see. So we're gonna refresh this. I'm gonna end the vote. Vote new. Um, but um, what's a what's a good uh, what's a good war? Uh, mm -hmm. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so now we can vote uh, for your favorite um, Blizzard game. Let's see, does that actually get it? No. Okay, so that does not actually update the data. Uh, maybe I need to pass it in? Index any updates data set at index unless a plugin returns false. Hang on. Update data set one. Do I need to pass in the data, you think? Let's take a look. Where is this? Uh, chart JS update. Hitting charts. Chart update. Chart data. Data sets for each. So that's pushing on data. I don't want to do that. I guess I could remove and add all the data again, but that seems stupid. I want to be, like, bound to it. Should be a way to do that. Because I can technically just add and remove all the data, but that doesn't that doesn't help me out. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, where's Hearthstone? Sorry, gather. Uh, maybe set up a. BP where you receive events. Um, yeah, I could. Hang on. Uh, keyboard tray is the worst invention. <laughs> okay. Uh, or just update. Yeah, I'm gonna try update and see what that does. 
Uh, thank you, Taigu. Yeah, I love the music as well. You can find information about it below the uh, either Twitch stream or if this is on YouTube afterwards, it's in the description. Uh, we never tried calling update. You used update data sets, assuming it does what you want. Uh, I thought the first one I tried was update. Hang on. Update data set. You're right. I never did. So chart.update. We'll give it a try. You are 100% correct, sir. All right, so we have this running again. Vote, end. Vote. Uh, Warcraft and Starcraft tied. What? But I didn't vote for either of those. Uh, vote, new. Oh, hey. Cannot read update of undefined. Wait, what? 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 Oh, because uh, someone probably voted. Uh, so we loaded and we had an existing vote going, so the system sent down a vote, which it shouldn't have done, and so it tried to add a vote. That's why there was an exception. Uh, so here we go. <laughs> and it's possible we won't be able to get it to do what we want. If we can't, then we'll look somewhere else. I just wanted to give it a try, because it seemed nice. Sure looked nice. Uh, so, let me do this. I want access to it. So, let me get access to my chart. Return, chart, chart. Okay, hang on, that's not working. Vote end. Hey, Diablo wins, nice. And I didn't vote for it that time. All right, so let's refresh again. So now we have this page going. What is it? Hearthstone? And, uh... There. Now they're all in. Congratulations. Uh, there are probably more that I forgot about. You can go with some of the old ones. But, there you go. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. Voting. Dot. Chart. Undefined. Rip. Thought I passed that back. Hang on. Here's what we're gonna do. Chart equals an object. Bar chart equals an object. Uh, chart equals. Where's vote end? Vote end. And you know, chart equals an object again. So we're getting rid of this. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, JavaScript's a little weird sometimes. Oh, hey, Will Bennett. Welcome. Uh, oh, did uh, did Mark do uh, voting finally? He had been talking about wanting to do that back when I was like, here's how you use SignalR. So, it's Mark. Of course it's going to look nice. He's like a designer in a developer's body. He has mastered two skills, where most of us have only mastered one.
Uh, did I end the vote already? Vote ends. Uh, Hearthstone and Diablo, each with one vote. Okay. So there we go. Voting. And that's an empty object. But I'm going to sign over it because I don't start with it. And then that is still going to be an empty object, because I don't set it when we do that. So, okay, no shortcut for me. The only way to do it would be if I made a method that was get that, which I will make as uh, a little helper. So I'm going to make function uh, get chart. <sighs> Can't believe I'm doing this. Uh, return chart. So uh, here's what we're gonna do. That is get chart now. Congratulations. You made me do a thing I didn't want to do, JavaScript. Vote and thank you everybody. There we go. Let's refresh this. Now if I do vote start, um, red, yellow, blue. Sorry, green, you're out of the list. Voting dot get chart. There we go, now we have our chart. So, full access to that. Uh, B. Chavez, welcome! I think that's the first time you said something in chat, but hi, how's it going? Okay, so this gets me my chart. So, I want to say... var chart equals voting dot get chart. That'll get me, that'll get me my chart. I have right there. Sorry about that text being super, super small down there. Is there a way I can make that bigger? Yeah, that works. I mean, that's ginormous now, but hey, at least you can hopefully see some of it now. Right behind my head, so that's wonderful. Uh, let's see. Oh, I guess it's beside my head. So, chart dot update. Hey, Lucky, welcome. Let's take a look just at the console. I need to duck. All right, guys, there we go. You can't see me anymore. You can see the code. No, I'm not going to duck the whole stream. That would kill my back. Uh, let's see. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, perfect. We can see this. screen. It's, uh, it's the annoyance of the fact that I put this right here, huh? So let's let's raise this up. We can still see red. Um, I guess I could move this somewhere else. Anyway, uh, so chart dot update data set zero. People voted for one, right? Yeah, we're not getting any data yet. What? Oh, uh, chart data data sets for each. Then we can push on because data on the data set has it. So let's try this. Chart data data set for each. Sorry guys, that is right behind my head. So it looks like that. We got data set for each data set data set dot data push so we're gonna push that one on each time um, and data is what I don't know what we want to add so what's that supposed to be chart lab label and data how do I update it guys does not show me how to update the data.
Come on, seriously, how do you update charts? Wait a minute, what's this? Uh, live updating data? Oh, interesting. So they put a little example so we can see the chart updating live. Uh, so... They have a little canvas on here that they drew in that little spot. Uh, and then over here, what did they do with the JavaScript? Sorry, CSS, they didn't do anything with you. Uh, data sets, so they have fully defined data sets with all the color and the data points in it. Um, this is ugly, don't judge me. <laughs> love it um, I love it there you go that's funny so that is chart JS just paste it in there huh so chart JS min obviously uh, so they just pasted that in there so we had access to it and then they just said new chart data and then the options animation uh, they set it to false, new chart, given the context, new chart, line, data. What calls update data? Ah, here we go. So they did a set interval. Oh, oh, they update the data and then just create a new line chart each time. Oh, okay. Well, that's funny. Um... <laughs> Thanks, Will Bennett. Uh, chart update now or I will throw my computer out the window. Update just invalidates its internal states. Uh, Sushinator, uh, welcome. We are trying to get Chart.js to work for our voting system. Uh, so we, we did our own to begin with, but the plan was to switch to use a uh, an actual charting library. And I looked at this one, I'm like, hey, that looks nice. It's nice and simple and easy to set up. And then, and of course, you know, it wasn't as easy to actually make it do what you wanted it to do. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, like what this one did, how um, it just assigns a new one with the data each time, so doing this. Chart line. I want to see, can we do, can we just call horizontal bar instead of line? How do I tell that to run again? Huh. Well, that's funny. So there it is as a bar chart. <laughs> exactly, Will Bennett. Never say, oh yeah, we could totally do that. No, that doesn't look difficult at all. Yeah, I've never made that mistake before. Uh, Dell Cheddar. Uh, yes, we're, we're talking about, dude, you're getting a dough. Uh, that's true, Crimson Green. Uh, although, really, the problem isn't having to face the Yankees. It is having to face uh, Araldus Chapman. Uh, as you'll notice, the last two years, uh, they, they dropped their games to Araldus Chapman. Um, okay, so, bar, they have a bar method, how do I tell it that it is, so 
So if I say um, chart dot bar bar, hang on. What are the options on this? Context and config. So where's configuration? Maybe layout? No. So not under bar, because we didn't find it there. Um, category, bar, modes. Wait, hang on. Uh, if it's defined and the axis is horizontal, this will be used. Y labels, uh, horizontal bar chart, horizontal, horizontal. The horizontal bar configuration is specified in chart defaults horizontal bar. Well, let's find out, where is it? Where is it? Hello, JS Fiddle. Bar. Nope, doesn't use that anywhere. Bummer. Uh, Seven twenty. Uh, at uh, actually, we're only we should only be thirty frames a second. Uh, because uh, developer stream doesn't really need to uh, uh, update more than that and the reason we do 720 is sometimes Twitch won't give us scaling factors for people to be able to adjust the quality of the stream so if someone's connection is limited uh, we will lag a whole bunch so that's why we only that's why our default right now is only 720 uh, if we ever get partnered with Twitch I will always do a 1080p stream uh, so you'll never have to worry about that uh, uh, maybe capitalize on it. I think you had lowercase. Oh, that could be. That could be. Um, let's give it a try. We'll see what it does. Uh, do. Uh, okay, hang on. Uh, you need to learn C++ for your class, uh, next semester. Uh, any tips on where to start? Um, actually, Copius made a, uh, a great suggestion, um, which he'll probably whisper to you, because uh, he's a nice guy like that. Uh, but also, if you want to chat with other people, uh, you can check out our Discord. Um, I could actually make a, uh, a room in our Discord for talking about C++, <clears throat> of which there would probably be a bunch of people interested in that. Um, so we definitely have bar. Wait, hang on. Is horizontal. Well, if that just exists, wouldn't that be annoying? Uh... Uh, Fuel Snable. I can make an F-sharp room. Uh... Maybe Crimson can make it right quick right now, because he's here. 
Crimson Green has the power to make that room, I believe. Uh, let's do one of these real fast. So this will be chart related stuff. I'm going to get rid of the get chart because we're not using it. Um, we want to hard code scale, blah, blah, blah. So the number of steps are added over there. Okay, I'll have to read up on what those are. So those are the options that they suggest for this, and we don't want to have an interval, we just want to update whenever we get a change. So we can just say new one and pass in the options each time. Um, do, do, do. I think that will work then, so let's hop back over. Um, remove the PHP room while you're at it. <laughs> uh, come on guys, someone asked specifically for that PHP room. We don't have to get rid of it, uh, so let's do this. I might have to specify begin at zero again. Uh, we'll see if I can get away without it. Um, I don't need to worry about that, uh, but our data is going to be this. Data equals that. Uh, hang on. Where's data used? So inside the interval, he calls update data, which is what he does here. Sets the labels. Uh, so essentially what that should do is that should update the data object, and then we'll call that. So. We'll do an update data also, which is basically what our uh, vote received is. So update data will get called here. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, I would not mind PHP being on the bottom of the list. We don't have that many PHP people in here. Uh, okay, so I don't want to do that. Uh, labels equals old data labels. So that should be our initial one. So that's whatever I started data off with, which is right here. That's number of votes. Uh, we don't we only have one data set so this is data set let's get rid of the B one because we don't need those uh, so what it's doing is it is adding on okay so here's what's happening uh, so this is adding on a new label. don't think we need to mess with labels at all.
Yeah, we shouldn't have to mess with the labels, I don't think. Data sets. So it called it like this, which is absolutely ridiculous. Well, I guess we can call it that way, but it really doesn't need to be. Because uh, it's just properties at that point. It says data set, data, old data, data set. This is assigning in a random value at that point. So... We want to replace all the values of votes. So here's the deal. We get in when we get a vote received, vote info dot vote totals. So we're just setting this value, but we don't really want to do that. What we want to do is this. We want to say um, we want to replace all the values. So <laughs> um there's got to be a nice way to do that. Replace all values in an array nicely. Wait, what? Tell me that when I run this, I get back all those values. On array one, and it's treated as isn't that just an assignment of it though? That's just like a copy of it, though. That's not what I want. I guess I could shift them all out. All values in array JavaScript. Uh, we could do it that way, just doing a for each, grabbing the index of the new array and assigning the value of each one. That'd technically work. Um, okay, yeah. I'd prefer a different way, but I think vote total should have all of the relevant data. So let's try it. Data set new data equals the data set of nine plus a new value. Push that on as a data set and shift the previous one off. Okay. Never mind. In that case, I can just do this. Um, apparently, I don't need to do any of that. You kidding me? I can just do that and that'll work, it thinks. That makes no sense. Data, votes, push on votes, shift off the previous votes. Okay, well that would work. If that... Because I was going to look at, hey, how can I do this? Um, But if I can just replace the whole value, I think I can get away with that. Maybe we'll do no animations here in a second. Bokyo, welcome, hello. Uh, one question I've got now that I'm wondering about, CTX. I use that new chart in the context right 
but I didn't create it that way. Uh, so new chart in the context. So we're going to say chart equals new chart ctx and then chart dot horizontal chart dot horizontal bar passing in the data so after we update the data which really is just doing this so I'm going to do that instead where did our data object come from Got it. So it created data up at the top, like this. Did I make data in a similar way? Yes, I did. Labels, data sets. So then this had data sets. So data push. So instead of updating old data, we were just updating the data value. So when we receive a vote, we're going to go ahead and say update the data. We don't actually need the context as it turns out for this way of doing things then. Grab the first data set and just adjust its data pushing on those new values. And then all we should have to do is call this again and tell it make a new chart this way. And if this is all that's involved in display chart, I'm not even going to bother with that function. It's not worth it at that point. So when we start the vote, we're going to create a new chart, do that. Uh, when a vote ends, we're going to blank out the chart so the chart object no longer exists. When we receive a vote, we will update the data set, passing in the value that we, the values that we have from the vote info. So at which point I guess we're not even keeping track of the votes data ourselves. It's just coming in like this. Uh, so that makes sense. I think that will work. Uh, let's take a look back here. Give it a shot. Giant uh, console window down there. Shrink it back down. I'll zoom it in if we need it again, everybody. Don't you worry. Refresh the page. Now here's what we go. Here's where we go. A, B, C. There's already a vote. Whoops. Uh, red wins. Vote. Uh, a, B, C. That work? Nope. What in the heck happened? Let's go over to JS Voting. I'm going to swing on down here to Vote Start. Oh, wait, hang on. I didn't get anything. Let's restart the bot. Oh, I didn't say create. That's why. Rip. Uh, no, no, actually it was fine the whole time. Uh, I didn't say create. I said vote ABC.
So now we can do this. Now we're caught in the debugger. And let's see what happened. Horizontal bar, data, options, animation. Okay, so it didn't like this. My guess? Horizontal bar is not a thing. Horizontal bar is not a function. Yep, there you go. Chart, horizontal bar, not a function. Alright. Not terribly surprising. Um... Chart.js horizontal bar method must include horizontal bar. Did I spell horizontal bar right? Type is one of the things that it needs. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back into here. Uh, and we'll say... Uh, function update chart. Uh, we don't need the chart. We just need uh, chart. Uh, timeout's way too high. Uh, Dina Vagos, hello, welcome. Not the, please look into the answer section, not the question section. Wait, wait, didn't I go into the answer section? Oh my god, are you kidding? Oh, Jesus. Wow, you're right. Uh, that is hilarious. That's not horizontal. What? Yeah, so they're setting type based on that. Chart JS. Let's go, Chart JS. Here's what we're doing. This is war. How'd they do it? Horizontal bar chart data. There you go. On load context. Horizontal bar equals new chart. Or type horizontal bar chart data. Pass it in. They didn't do this type of call. When you modify data, what did they do? Click new data set. Oh, they then just called update on it. So once you modify the data set, then you're supposed to be able to call update. So you don't actually have to do the new thing that we did. You're supposed to then just be able to call update. So that's when you're supposed to be able to call update. Which means, whoops. Chart.js. So if we go take a look at the documentation again, uh, and we go to charts, bar, horizontal, we're supposed to be able to pass in new chart like this. So jumping over here, where'd we new chart? We new charted right here. New chart context, chart equals that. 
horizontal bar, data, data, options, options. So there we go. Let's try that one. Uh, let me see. Uh, Dina Vagos. Uh, what's going on? We are working on our chart for our overlay. We're going to put our votes in a uh, in a horizontal bar chart. Should be nice. Uh, so you're writing C sharp code? Uh, no, not on VS Code. Uh, oh, and JS Code? Uh, no, Shark Deed. Uh, we do C sharp and JavaScript both in Visual Studio usually uh, here on the stream. But yes, you're right. We could do our JavaScript coding in VS Code if we wanted to. Um, it's just today we're doing. Uh, uh, most of our coding in Visual Studio. So uh, let me make sure that is absolutely refreshed and a quick little hype just to confirm. It is there and connected because we hyped. So things are good there. Bring this down. Got to make sure we got the console down. Uh, the joke was that C Sharp code you'd write in Visual Studio and JavaScript you'd run in VS Code. Was there a joke more than that, Copious? Okay, so there is the structure. What did it do with these? That did not create the data. The data didn't come in. Uh, Will Bennett is correct. I'm laughing on the inside. Um, Ray choices length. Uh, what you all have to remember is uh, that I am actually an artificial intelligence, so jokes are very difficult uh, to, um, you know, understand by artificial intelligence. So it's very, very complicated, very complicated. Data, options, what? No, 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 not, not data options. number of votes ah data is votes okay so we created this right off the bat and it has nothing so hang on here's the problem so we need to say data is that and then we need to set it down here in the initial running of this so when we start up a vote data equals that and instead of being assigned to votes it's assigned to this are really bad examples guys uh, usage creating a chart labels there we go and then the data set. There we go. Yeah, data needs labels and then the data set. Okay, gotta run this right. Labels was choices. Like that. Yes, this makes sense now. Label is choices and then the array of choices dot length. Fill 
fill it with zeros. Yeah, 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 okay. So, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, okay. So we need a an array that is the same length as the number of choices that we received filled with zeros to start off with because we don't have any data yet. Uh, so we don't need options. We don't need votes because we now have data and chart. Um, so options and votes go away and data becomes this each time when we reset because we'll create a new data object each time at start. So at start, we create the data object, we assign it there, that lets us access it elsewhere, the type is set to horizontal, the options are set to options animation, we don't need to set the vote totals anymore, we use this value in there, get rid of that, uh, and we call update, we do not actually need context, though I'll continue passing it in for now rather than pulling it out. Uh, oh, um, Admiral Trap, hey, welcome. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I made your C-Sharp tutorial series. I thought they were on VS Code and I have seen you coding. Uh, Sharkeed, yes. So, uh, I use VS Code in my, uh, Learn to Code in C-Sharp series, which I, I really, really am gonna bring back, guys, I promise. Uh, you found some tutorials on creating Windows Forms and .NET, uh, using system.something.something. Uh, yes, that is correct. Um, Admiral Trap, I'd be interested in taking a look, and uh, sorry about Nightbot, uh, you know, bashing you like that. It's it's kind of annoying. Um, Brave Cobra, welcome. Uh, hop onto our Discord, we can discuss problems with fixing. Uh, yeah, so Copious is totally right. Uh, hop onto the Discord, and um, some of us can actually, can definitely help you with that stuff. Oh, and uh, Will Bennett was already on top of it. Uh, Admiral Trap, I'd love to hear about what you learned. It sounds fun. Okay, so did I get everything in here? Is that all the warnings and other stuff like that? Whoops, let's delete that because JavaScript doesn't like those. Uh, so chart and data, chart and data get reset. Uh, this pushes on and then calls update down here. We set the label equal to options. Options? No, choices, right? Options isn't a thing anymore. Set it equal to choices. Choices dot length fill. Data set number of votes. Voters. Data. Data set. Okay. All right. That looks good now. Uh. Hmm. I wonder what they are there, death packs. Uh, but I am a big, big fan of ASP.NET Core. This is quite nice. All right, refresh the page. Let me go ahead and do a vote. And did someone vote? A wins! Hooray, A! Uh, let's bring that up. Okay, so we can see the console window. We can see our uh, debugging window. Everything is here. Vote new. Uh, red, yellow, blue, green. Uh, that's probably enough options. So now we have red, yellow, blue, and green. And when we vote for red, nothing happens! Bummer! Darn, I was hoping something would happen. Um, let's check and see what it does when we debug that. Vote received. Uh, Bokyo should be called right after someone votes. So, vote one. All right, so we come in here. Vote info has 2010. Zero, zero. That makes sense. That is an unchanged data set. And if I step forward, uh, so we're going to step one space. Data set. Okay.
and then update. Huh. <laughs> Brave Cobra voted for you. <laughs> I love how Wolf Bennett complained about his uh, his vote and, and Brave Cobra changed it. Like, wow, that's impressive, guys. <laughs> okay, so we're not getting data here. So the other problem I've got here is this one. Uh, now, I actually had this fixed before we started um, the one of these changes. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put that one back, because I know how to fix that one. Um, begin at zero. Uh, yep. So as part of our options... You should be able to say scales uh, x axis begin at zero. But I don't want those. Options. Let's see. Updating charts, data sets, data, push. Ah, huh, yep, okay, got it. Can totally do that. Then you call update. That's what we did. It did an update. Refresh this again. Vote end. Vote new. Um, R G B. R G and B, huh? Indexed at zero, so that's good. Uh, we don't actually need the number labels on the scale that it has down there. Um, hang on, we didn't actually modify any of this yet. So when we do this, break on there, uh, Guru, hey, welcome. So when I vote for that, comes in and let's go all the way down here. So we get to this point, our data set, what's on it? So, zero, one, two. Where two actually seems to be the, uh, the actual data. One, zero, zero. Seems like my data's wrong. Sorry, Brave Cobra. We didn't have a yellow one there. Uh, 
Uh, Anthony R. Lane, yeah, so uh, we are going to be adding that. Uh, that's part of our stuff as we're updating the overlay. So we are working on the overlay right now, but we're not getting that one in this stream. Uh, but yes, Anthony, we will be putting that. As I said, that's going to be one of the things that goes in the space next to me. Um, uh, how do you get the text in the right above if there is a new follower? Oh, oh, uh, you're talking about up in the top right where it says... Uh, new subs, resubs, and follows. Uh, so first off, if anyone wants to click the follow button, you'll see that that will automatically update. Uh, that one's actually not from us yet. Uh, we are going to be adding that feature in. That is actually coming from a Streamlabs uh, alert. Uh, it's a Streamlabs widget that is there. Uh, but our plan is to do all those ourselves. Uh, so we will be replacing everything that I'm using uh, Streamlabs for here. Uh, with our own features so that it can all be controlled nicely by our bot that we are building so um this chart is being annoying though because i really thought this was going to listen this was going to work a little bit better and do what i told it to do uh yeah so we can do all the standard array stuff with this data set We push that on. Now what's on the data set? Now it has four items, and what are they? It has new one of those. Now it has one one zero instead of one zero zero. Okay. That makes sense because we called it twice. Um, it looks like we're not up. Oh, I bet we have to go through each one and update them. Uh, so I bet that's how it works. Okay. I think I know the problem, everybody. So now when we run this I'm now gonna have three arrays yes I have three arrays and each one has a separate vote okay I see the problem we got it we know what the issue is now so uh, vote end uh, brave Cobra yes the bot can be used by other streamers and actually we are uh, in the process of making it more user-friendly, so some of the stuff that we were doing recently was uh, allowing enabling and disabling of various features uh, and to be able to adjust the positioning of our various canvases for uh, doing our overlay stuff. Uh, so that is so other programming streamers can use this same bot and work on it uh, alongside us. So that is that is one of our goals here, is to make this something that you know any of our any of our other friends who stream programming can do the same stuff. Uh, seems like you were passing a whole rate. Yes, Bokyo! <laughs> exactly, yes. Uh, I wanted to check through a second one just to see if that's what was happening. So, uh, what we need to do is this. We need to, for each one of those, pop one off and put the next one on. Uh, so... We need to say, uh... We need to do a vote info for each, right? Yeah. Uh, I might be getting slightly mad here for a second. For each one, this is the uh. Vote count. And then call update. So for each one of those, push it on, shift that off. Uh, uh, Brave Cobra, yeah, so if you start streaming, you are absolutely welcome to use the source code that we use here for this. Uh, we're trying to make everything more configurable so that uh, does work. Uh, if you run into anything that, uh, you know, is too dev chatter hard-coded, just refactor it out and send us a pull request for it, and uh, we can do that. Uh, the goal is to make it so a lot of the stuff we use, uh, for the most part, are some basic defaults. So, um, obviously things like the quoting system, you wouldn't want to have my defaults in there, but... Um, uh, 
you might want things like that there is a voting piece that shows up somewhere and uh, defaults on the commands like which ones are turned on. Uh, so we're going to say vote new. Uh, there you go. Red, yellow, blue, and green. <clears throat> Derp. What? Am I smoking something, guys? Yeah, exactly, Brave Cobra. Yep. Oh, I could use the uh, arrow syntax. I like it. Uh, problem is, in JavaScript, for some reason, I still don't think arrow syntax, despite the fact that I do that every single time in C Sharp. Um, which is kind of weird. Uh, wait, what? Wait, what? What? Uh, I'm confused. What? Didn't, isn't that what I did? What? Vote info not a, uh, is it not an array? Oh! 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 I know the problem. I'm sorry. That's why. Vote totals. Oh, it wasn't an array. I'm like, what is going on? This is how you do this. Like, oh man, I'm derping today a little bit, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, we will get that working better there. Uh, is it easy to remove the signing from a Donna DLL blue, blue spite? Uh, not as far as I know. Um, one of the problems with the way that uh, they set up that stuff. Uh, is like the requirement of then needing like either requiring all signed things or all non-signed things it's really really kind of annoying actually um, boom there we go look at that that worked not, I was gonna say that should have worked uh, what happens with oh there we go hang on someone else vote <laughs> okay, so now we just need to shrink this into a little box and put it somewhere on the screen. Uh, but you can see all the different voting, and uh, it's kind of interesting how it animates in like that. Looks pretty nice. Uh, we can mess with colors and things like that as well. Uh, I want to get rid of the access labels. And to be honest, I'm thinking about making it percentage-based or something like that. Or at least telling it not to do fractions. <clears throat> so nice all right so that's not bad let's commit this uh whether we're good with how that is right now or not um i'm kind of disappointed that didn't work uh, let's see, so we did that. Wire up chart JS chart. 
Okay, so we have the basic chart. Let's see what else we can get on here. Crichton 1000, welcome. You made it. You didn't miss the stream. clearing that out right yet. I will have to fix that somehow. Um, we'll figure out a way. Um, so vote end doesn't work quite right yet. New red, yellow, blue. Oh! It didn't scale nicely, but you can see it right here. See this tiny little thing? There you go. You can't read any of that text. That is terrible. <laughs> that is that is really not nice. Crimson Green votes for red? Alright, so it is shrunken down to the correct size-ish. Um, I believe they had options on this for... There we go, hang on. Their labels and everything aren't as bad as mine. Why are their labels better? Brave Cobra, Hangman JS is our Hangman game. Uh, that's why it's included. I don't know what you mean by why is it included. Datasets, adjusting that, scale over skill steps to shortly. Okay, so if we're going to do that, I don't need responsive, um, I just need a sizing. I agree, Bokyo. I want a random color for each bar. Which is going to be w really weird if we're voting on colors. Because you'd need someone to make sure the colors lined up right. Um, no, you don't really need that. I was teasing. Uh, although it will still look weird. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the voting. So our canvas is actually described here in canvas properties inside of our database. So um, make them all crimson green. Exactly. So our voting canvas, what size did we try to make it? We tried to make it a 600 width by a 300 pixel height. 
So width of 600, height of 300. Put it in the top corner. Uh, vote end. Refresh the page. There we go. Let's bring this up just to confirm that it is indeed refreshed. This canvas, voting canvas, did not get its values updated. Why not? Width and height should have come from the database. Canvas width, canvas height, should have come from canvas width and canvas height, they're right there. Let's do this just to be sure. Let's uh, let's re reload this. So we're gonna force the whole application to restart here. Should, should do that, hopefully that gets us our new data. And a refreshed overlay. There we go, 600 by 300, perfect. Boat new. Red, yellow, blue. Uh, Brave Cobra, yeah, the bot will run in Linux. Uh, because this is .NET Core, so you can run this in Linux, you can run this in Docker, you can run this in Windows. Uh, so the label's too small here. Boat plaid. Perfect. The color plaid. My favorite color. Obviously. Fonts. Uh, this is one color black. Options. And I tell you, the docs here are not as helpful as I would like. Wait, what? This sounds great. What's this do? Oh, that's actually pretty nice. Huh. That's not bad, that's not bad. Um... Brave Cobra, um, so... It is so we are using Entity Framework Core for our data uh, in order to work. So it does not have to be MSSQL. Other data sources will work, uh, and I forget which ones work uh, that you'll be able to get on Linux. So that's a great question. Uh, EF Core Linux DB. Providers. There we go. Uh, EF Core Data Providers. So apparently there are ways to use a few. I see uh, my SQL, my cat. My cat, my, my cat, down, back down there. He's sitting on my chair. Yeah, should work. Um, I will say I didn't try it, but it should work. <laughs> okay, uh, so those labels need bigger labeling. Uh, so let's do this. What are those called? Labels? It's called labels, right? Labels. Yep, labels. Data, labels, font size. 
Um, oh, yeah, uh, that's another one. I wanted the red, blue, yellow, green, purple, orange set. Uh, the font size actually is actually in scales x axis. Ah, okay, got it. Uh, so I can mess with that. So that's on options. Uh, so that's scales. I think I have scales already. Option scales. So we're going to do this. So we have scales x-axis and y-axis. So y-axis font size set to 40. And... I assume if I change this example from x-axis to y-axis, or from y-axis to x-axis... Oh, that's funny, they have my setup. <laughs> They have both, oh, yep, and then they shift to ginormous. Cool. Uh, I like it. Nice. Um, so... Chart JS tick size. Tick step? What is it? Step? Maybe? Yep, set minimum step size and chart JS. Uh, SQLite is funky when doing migrations. Ah, uh, yes, Brave Cobra, that is true. Um, <laughs> SQLite is bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so SQLite is not that great. Neither is LocalDB. Neither one is actually designed to be like a robust data solution. So for that, you want to use like a full SQL Server or something like that if you want to go the Microsoft database route. Uh, SQL Azure also works pretty well. I would not recommend uh, going to production on a SQLite or a uh, lo uh, LocalDB, um, which is also uh, a SQL Server style thing. Um, but both of those actually do tend to work pretty well for a local development environment as long as keep in mind if you are using one that you have a development server somewhere like a shared place that you deploy to uh, where integration tests are run that's to make sure that uh, you didn't do something that only works in local db or sqlite uh, so big big important thing there um Tickman, uh, step size, user defined and fixed scale, number, okay, so step size is the one we want, which is step of one, right? So this is part of ticks. Step size one. Okay, so step size 1, font size 40. I think that should get us what we're looking for here. Let me end this vote. We're gonna... Ah, I gotta stop doing that. Seriously. Gotta stop hitting save in the website, huh? Vote new. Red, yellow, blue. Red, yellow, blue. I can read them. Hang on. There's the one, not showing any any ticks between. Um, I might want to increase the font size of the label, but there we go. Uh, so now I need to find a nice way of darkening these up so they become a little bit more obvious when they're going on the stream. Uh, and I maybe want to surround the whole thing. Um, so. Uh, and welcome website design. 
Uh, so that actually is not too bad. I, I actually think I like seeing it reanimate when the data changes. Uh, so that draws your attention to it as it's updating. Um, I'd like to see the label on it, though. Um, someone had a thing for that. But either way, this is definitely an improvement. Uh, so... So that is fixing the size. Uh, well, so is this technically. Fit into a smaller area. Cool. Very nice. I like it. So yeah, that's adjusting that. Uh, so I can't tell how many we're up to because I can't actually read the lower axis there. Because it needs a bigger font size as well. So if we do one of those, then it should have a bigger font size. Uh, now I want to adjust colors and everything on this. So that's part of data. When we create the new data, we can set up the colors. Uh, hang on, what's going on? Um, you know what's having problems with scrolling in the VS Solution Explorer on a laptop? It's way too fast. Casru! Um, I have, so when I, whenever I use scrolling in a laptop, I run into almost every interface I use scrolls way too fast. It annoys the crap out of me. Um, uh, but I, I don't know that one specifically, so it probably does just scroll too fast, Casru. Also, welcome! Uh, make the background opaque, maybe, just the bars uh, peeking from the side of the screen. Uh, yeah, Bokyo, I'm thinking that we need to set the background color. Uh, so I want to pull this up and take a look at styling options that are available. Uh, styling! Wait, I just saw it down here. Styling, there we go. Uh, dis do not display grid lines for this access of grid... Oh, this is grid line styling. What? Tick configuration, minor tick, major tick, uh, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Uh. Actually, maybe I just don't even want to show the tick marks on the bottom. That actually might be the better solution. So we will not show the x-axis ticks. So then we don't even have to show that. So x-axis, we do want to begin at zero. Display false. Color for data at index zero. Uh, so those are the various colors. Wait, hang on. Data sets background color. What? What? I don't want to fill them. When supplying colors to chart objects, you use number of formats you specify the colors of strings. If color is needed but not specified chart, you will use the global default color. Thank you. 
Uh, Bokyo, you don't have Amazon. Uh, well, I mean, you sort of do have Amazon, because uh, Twitch is Amazon. Default colors, right? I seem to remember such a thing. Yeah, Brave Cobra, it seems to have some default colors. Um... Oops. <laughs> Charges, default, uh... Background color. Coloring this... Exactly! Thank you! Yes, we want to color that area. Uh, uh, that seems really, really difficult. Uh, Sagittarius789, uh, welcome, thanks for following. And anybody else, if you're enjoying the stream at all, feel free to click that follow button to get notified the next time we go live. Uh, so vote start will set that color to be that. Why is it not like that? I'm not going to use Internet Explorer 8, so it's okay. Uh, so let's set this equal to, instead of 255, let's go with, what, like, um... So go with a nice gray. And actually, let's do this. Um, although I guess the nice way of doing that is that it becomes a very obvious uh, change the first time we try it this way. Let's see what doing this does. It should take up the full space when we do this. So let's end this vote. Vote end. Vote new red, yellow, blue. Derp. Well, oh, that apparently killed something. Yep. And well, that broke something. Cannot set property background color of undefined. Wait, what? What did I try to set it on? CTX. There was no style on CTX, apparently. Uh... Yeah, I actually want the whole thing. Um, HTML canvas set background color. Fill the whole canvas with specific color. I could fill the whole thing back. I want a background color. I don't want to fill that. I want to because I want to make sure it's the background color because I want to put stuff over. I guess it's going to write over top of it when I do that anyway. Um, uh, sure, we'll try that for now. And uh, this will end up being a canvas property setting, then, if we do go this route. Um, let's get rid of that. Reset that. There we go. Uh, interesting. So now we need to, in some way, to hide that and show it only when we actually run this, because otherwise that sucker is going to get ugly. Uh, vote 1. Vote end. Vote new A, B, C. 
Nope. What happened? Oh, I still have the code there. Derp. Remove. Okay, vote one. Vote, vote, and yep, I knew that was gonna fail, that's fine. Vote new A, B, C. A, B, and C. Vote one. Interesting. Okay, so it's like that. Uh, but we then would, if we were gonna go this route, we need that color to basically just disappear. Whatever it is, it needs to be super, super not there. Uh, so let's just say, um, How do you uh, set the alpha value in CSS? I don't remember. Yeah, exactly. You gotta do an RGBA? Something like that, maybe? Custom properties, that's weird. What? <laughs> Dang it, okay, so we can't go that way. Uh, I'm gonna remove that then, since I don't want that to appear like that. Um... Yeah, so someone's suggesting that we do this. Um, hmm. Well, maybe we'll skip that for now. Uh, so, Castro, I guess we could just make it white or something like that. Um, but then the problem with this is that it's going to just appear right off the bat. So at that point we're going to need to like set it to something based on these. So it appears we can see it. The problem is right now our uh, styling color is not very great. As you'll see it's putting gray on top of gray which is not ideal um, but we can fix that a little bit by setting the colors that it actually uses in here so uh, chart JS colors not axes charts no nation colors there we go colors uh, it's initially set to that. Uh, I'm not a fan of that one, but anyway. Um, Chart.js random colors. There we go. Uh, get random color. Thank you, person, for writing a get random color method. That's what I was looking for. Uh, Brave Cobra, you're getting yelled at. Uh, how to create multi-color bar chart using Chart.js. What is this one? A picture of their chart? Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Do they have a random color? Get random color hex. Yeah, see, there you go. 
Yeah, that's basically the same thing I was using, right? X, color, breach, math, random floor, 16. Yep, that's the same thing I got here. That was the same thing. Get random color. What was yours suggesting here? Background color, so they set that, they have a static number of data, so we need to set ours a number of times though, uh, but we can still do that very easily. So we're gonna set background colors like this. So where do I set my zeros? My initial set of zeros in the data. Where did I create my data? Brendan, where'd you make your data? Data, 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 here it is. Data, array, data sets, there we go. Data sets, data, background color, right after data. We're gonna say, I mean, it doesn't have to be obviously, but that's just where I'm gonna put it. Background color, background color. And then this is gonna be an array of those. Uh, except I don't want an array. I want to do array dot uh, array choices dot length fill with get random color. Uh, yeah, uh, that ought to work. I think. Let's find out. So refresh this page, let's end whatever vote we've got going. Vote, new, red, yellow, blue. There they are. Now the fun part is because I named them with colors, there's no way these are going to match. Red is green. Alright, someone else vote. Or actually I could just vote again. Nope. Uh, nope, that didn't work. I got the same color every time. How did I get the same color every time? I must have applied it only once. So, in that case, I'll make it the old-fashioned way. So that just called this once and then filled it with the one value that I had there. Uh, so we'll do this instead. Whoops. Dang it. I keep opening the wrong window. Alright, so... Color, uh, bar, colors. Let bar, uh, oops. Bar, colors, equal. Uh, and then choices for each. And actually, I could say this. Uh, bar colors push. Uh, and what did we call it? Get random, get random color like that. Use it down there. That's gotta be it. Oh, uh, you know what I could do instead? Um, I could do this choices dot map, and we'll do this really, really like a. Uh... Yeah, there we go. That's better. That's way better. I like it. Uh, that that's much nicer. So now we create bar colors directly from that one. Oh, it's nice when you remember how stuff works. Refresh this. Vote new. Red, yellow, blue. What? What? Um. 
wet. I mean, I could 4-H it instead, Fuel Snable. Um... Wait, does it have side effects? Hang on, what did I- uh, Oh, I copied over the wrong thing! Oh, derp! Son of a gun! Yeah, no, Fuel Snable, you're right. I didn't even cop- I copied my code, and that doesn't make any sense. Um, that's not what I meant to do at all. Uh, that- that is not what I meant to do one bit. I meant to do this. That was the entire point of- <laughs> Fuel Snable, that was the entire point of doing this, was so that I didn't have side effects anymore. <laughs> That was the whole point of changing to the map, uh, was this. There we go. And then when I actually went and did it, I derped the whole thing. Uh, there we go. Hey, now it should work. Yeah, I have no idea what my brain was doing right then. Can I read property zero of undefined? Uh... It's like I can't find the data sets right now. Can I find the property zero of undefined, huh? So data has been messed up. What are you doing, my brave cobra? You think you think that needs to change? Vote new red, yellow, blue. Voting has started. Hey, there we go. <laughs> yeah, Nightbot's dumb about that stuff. Uh, so red is yellow. Someone else want to vote? <clears throat> I guess I can change my vote. Those colors are terrible. Please don't let it pick colors ever again. That's awful. Oh my god. You Random color generation. Bad idea, I guess. Yeah, that was random color generation right there. Uh... I guess we could pick based on the index. Um, let's do this. Uh, Chart colors looks fantastic. Thanks, random guy on the interwebs. I really like your list of colors. Uh, so colors.
There we go. Uh, binary man, welcome. Thanks for following. Uh, what is this? I have a function that does random colors. It's just a predefined array of colors and it picks a random index. Yeah, Will Bennett, that's basically what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, uh, that's the idea, Simon. Uh, why doesn't, why don't more editors implement it like that? Uh, adding chart to vote. Oh, uh, wait, really? Brave Cobra? Uh, wait, um... Wait, hang on, what is this? Uh, let's take a look at what this is. You are telling me that there is this. Yes, leave the site. Uh, setting global colors doesn't work. Well, okay. That does not do it. That's not what I want. JS provider net I love how someone pointed out then maybe the uh, then maybe the getting started should be updated with this and I agree with whoever said that uh, if you're gonna write a thing be a good idea to do that all right so vote start um, set default colors. I'm gonna do this every time just in case. Function set default colors. Why do I get the impression everybody's freaking out right now and saying things? Maybe it's because stuff's happening. I can I can see chat updating over there everybody. How about we don't mess with those just yet? Uh, wait, what do, wait, hang on. Uh, you can also have an array of dark colors, apply lightning as well. Column selection is fine, to be honest. I wanted a basic syntax color and column selection. Wait, never mind. I've never seen someone use a column selection. Multiple selection is fine. Just use Vim. Uh, hang on. Does that exist? Charges provider is not defined. You lying to me, thing?
All right, screw it. Going back to what I was doing before. Not setting those, just going to pick random. From among this set. Let color options equal that. Colors, math of floor math, random times, colors dot length. So we're going to have it return color options. We are then going to floor the value of our random value, which for anyone who doesn't know how JavaScript random works, um, random returns us back a number between zero and one. Uh, so this fractional amount, we're going to take it, we're going to multiply it by our total. So in this case, 16. So we get a fraction of the number 16. And then what we do is we floor the decimal place off. And so that's how you get random ranges inside of JavaScript. You'll see that kind of code all over the place. Uh, so we'll do get random color. And it's from among that set. We could possibly have a duplicate right now because uh, I'm not protecting against that. Uh, I guess what I could do is I could remove the item that we grabbed. And then that would actually fix it. Wheat lol. <laughs> that's why you stopped using JavaScript. Well, I guess that's a reason. Zero to length, get random element. Uh, yes, that would get you a random number from that. Yeah, I almost always make a, uh, a random choice uh, extension method for myself if I'm uh, doing coding where I need to choose an item out of a uh, out of an array or something like that. Uh, so I do that pretty frequently in C sharp because you pretty much always need one. Uh, so it's kind of silly that random didn't have that built in in the language, but eh, what are you gonna do? All right, so we're gonna refresh this. Is votes? Is there a vote going? Oh, no, right, I just restarted red, yellow, blue. Uh, thank you, Brave Cobra. And that's the funny thing with having the... Oh, and blue is right! Blue was right! Look at that! Hey, there you go. That's not bad. Is that anyone's flag? Did we just did we just draw anyone's flag right there? Anybody know? Either way, those colors are not horrible. Those are not the worst colors I've ever seen. Um. Okay, so. Add non-terrible colors. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 that was pretty darn close there, Will Bennett. Almost the Ukrainian flag. Uh, this is just blue on top of yellow. That's not, that's not even close to the Ukrainian flag, Fuel Snable. You get it upside down. Is blue on top of yellow. So no one knows of a country with orange on top of this like 
pukey green color and this like slightly reddish blue that we've got here. So, okay. Uh, well. <laughs> okay, that, that's fair, Fuel Snable. It is. It is. It's closer to a lot of flags that aren't the U.S. flag. The U.S. flag's got a lot of complexity. You can't really do it with a bar chart that well. Especially not a three-choice bar chart like this. Um, okay, so... Uh, that's not bad. Hmm. Uh, hey, Twitchloff, welcome. Welcome, welcome. All right, a couple of other things since I've got a bunch of people in here. Uh, if you haven't yet, check out our Discord. It's a great place to chat. Uh, if you want to check out any of the code that we do here on the stream, including our chatbot, if you actually want to use it on your stream, you're welcome to. If you want to update it, send us pull requests, anything like that, make any suggestions. Uh, there, All the code is out on GitHub, so you can find that out at github.com slash devchatter. It is right about here, and you can find the chatbot at this spot right here. This branch right here that it's telling me I can compare and send it a pull request, that is the code we were working on today. So you can actually go and check out that code and see the recent commits of it, including these right here that we did today, October 1st. Uh, for anyone that is wondering, uh, our schedule here, the best way to find out our schedule is to ask the bot and the bot will tell you, or you can check down below the stream to find out when we stream. We actually stream four times a week. Uh, interesting things going on this week that I want to mention. Uh, later on this week, I will be at Tech Bash in Pennsylvania. So if you are going to that event and you want to get some Dev Chatter I'm Coding stickers, yeah, uh, that's green, and I have a chroma key turned on, so uh, the dinosaur is kind of, you know, transparent right now. Uh, but that's only because I'm editing it out. Uh, he's actually green. So you can kind of see him there in his face and his little tongue. He's kind of cute. Uh, that is our Chatosaurus. Uh, so if you are going to be there, uh, I will have stickers on me. So find me, say hello, and uh, I will make sure to get you an I'm Coding sticker if you are there. Uh, I will actually have uh, three, different si three different stickers. Uh, some hype stickers. Uh, some of those I'm Coding stickers and some smaller of those I'm Coding stickers if you've got little space or want to do one on your phone. Uh, other things going on. We will be doing a nice stream on Saturday. I don't know whether or not I'm going to be able to do a stream on Thursday of this week. I will not be streaming tomorrow. So tomorrow is canceled because I will be traveling. Uh, but on Thursday, I'm not speaking at the conference, but I'm not entirely certain I'll be able to stream from there so I've got this I've canceled that one uh, so Thursdays is canceled we'll see uh, how that goes uh, Brave Cobra yeah they just peel right off so it's pretty easy to get them um, let me think what other things do I want to make sure I mention um, Huh. Uh, if anyone is starting streaming or anything like that, let me know and I will do what I can to try and assist you and help you get set up. Uh, I'm going to be doing a couple of sessions there. I don't believe any of my sessions are going to be streamed by the conference. Uh, so the conference does not stream most of their sessions, so you probably won't be able to catch mine that way. And I don't know if they're recording them either. Uh, and Wheatlaw is correct. We are going to wrap up the stream right now. And uh, a couple of things that I want to mention, so don't go yet. Um... You can find all my stuff on YouTube. Uh, Will Bennett, there's definitely should be a stream on Saturday. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for the uh, Twitch Prime sub there, Twitchloff. Much appreciated. That is two months in a row. Uh, so... Let me spam some hype emotes in the chat there. Uh, so hype, hype, hype. Uh, 
things that I need to mention. Uh, I really will be scheduling some of our Learn to Code uh, series coming up here soon. So we're going to do some more Learn to Code and C-sharp stuff. So back to the beginnings. Um, if some of the guy, guy in the red suit, which guy in the red suit, which one's wearing a red suit? Hang on. Hang on. Filter. Turn the subs back on. What? Uh, yeah, Castro, I'll make sure to thank the top cheer. Uh, Balmer. Oh, man. You said I looked like Balmer? Oh, man. <laughs> I couldn't remember which one was wearing red. Uh, oh, man. Anyway, uh, yes, Kazru. Top, top cheer right there from Kazru. Uh, anyway, so as I was saying, I will be scheduling some more Learn to Code uh, episodes. We'll be doing Solid Saturday on Saturday. Uh, so I need to pick which Solid we're doing for that one, because... We're out of solid, so it'll be some other, uh, some other one. Uh, Wheat Lull, that is, uh, Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer, uh, that are dancing there. Uh, if you are interested in picking up a Dev Chatter mug, we now have that kind of fun stuff on our merch store. Uh, and, uh, any support anybody offers for the channel makes it much easier for me to do this kind of stuff and keep doing these streams. Uh, one of the best things you can actually do is tell people about the stream. So, uh, design patterns. Oh yeah, Brave Cobra, that's a good idea. I could focus on a design pattern. Uh, so maybe I'll choose one of those. Like the Golden Hammer. Oh man, the Golden Hammer is the best. Best, best, uh, you know, principle there. Totally. Anyway. Uh, do, 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 let's roll some of these. So, Kazaru with the big old bitty cheer. Thank you, Kazaru. Uh, SNB, Lucky Number Seven, Stool Penner, Crimson Green. Thank you for moderating. Uh, thank you for the follows, uh, Binary Man and Sagittarius, and SNB, Shkizi, and Twitchloff. Thank you very much for the subs. Greatly appreciated. Hopefully, we will catch all of you on the next one. As I said, uh, we will not have our stream tomorrow. We normally stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays. Uh, we won't have our Tuesday stream this week, but we might have a Thursday stream. Possible, but expect it to get cancelled. Uh, and we will be back on Saturday. Uh, so I am glad you all enjoyed the stream. Uh, take care. We will, uh, we will be back. And with that, let me click at the buttons. Happy coding, everybody. See you.